Unexpected, Elon Musk just revealed Starship's massive thruster upgrade that could save Mars missions. But here's the shocking part. The current system completely failed during Flight 9, sending the 250-ton beast tumbling out of control. How did this happen? And why is this new hot gas thruster upgrade five times more powerful? Most importantly, without this fix, Mars colonization is impossible. This is the difference between making it to Mars or watching billions become space junk. Let's dive right in. Dive. So what exactly happened during Flight 9? that had space engine engineers questioning everything they thought they knew about Starship. Picture a 250-ton spacecraft hurtling through space, suddenly becoming as helpless as a leaf in the wind. The attitude control system, those crucial tiny thrusters that keep Starship pointed exactly where it needs to be, completely failed when a propellant leak drained the main tanks of pressure. But here's the terrifying part that nobody talks about. Without those thrusters, Starship became a massive, uncontrolled projectile. It couldn't orient itself for re-entry, couldn't execute landing burns, couldn't do anything except tumble helplessly through the void until it was ultimately lost. This wasn't just a minor technical glitch. This was a fundamental design flaw that could kill Mars colonization before it even begins. The current system relies entirely on something called Ullage Gas Thrusters essentially venting pressurized gas from the main fuel tanks to create tiny bursts of control thrust. It worked perfectly in testing, seemed logical on paper, and SpaceX had used similar approaches successfully on Falcon 9. But there was one catastrophic vulnerability nobody anticipated. What happens when those main tanks spring a leak? Here's where the story gets really shocking. When Flight 9 experienced that propellant leak, the tanks couldn't maintain the pressure needed to operate the attitude control system. It's like trying to steer a car after all your power steering fluid is leaked out. Technically, the steering wheel still turns, but good luck controlling 250 tons of spacecraft when you need precision most. But Elon Musk's latest revelation changes everything. SpaceX isn't just patching this critical flaw. They're completely revolutionizing how massive spacecraft maintain control in space, and the numbers are absolutely staggering. We're talking about hot gas thrusters that burn methane and oxygen, the exact same propellants as Starship's main Raptor engines. The performance difference is mind-blowing. While current cold gas thrusters achieve around 50 to 70 seconds of specific impulse, these new hot gas thrusters reach approximately 300 seconds. That's five times more efficient. But efficiency isn't even the most crucial advantage here. These hot gas thrusters operate completely independently of the main propellant tanks. They have their own dedicated fuel supply, their own pressure systems, their own everything. So when another leak happens, and in the harsh environment of space, leaks are inevitable, Starship can still maintain precise attitude control and potentially save the entire mission. Now here's where this upgrade becomes absolutely critical for humanity's future on Mars, and why Musk is betting SpaceX's entire Mars program on this technology. Mars missions aren't quick trips to low Earth orbit. We're talking about journeys lasting six to eight months, followed by extended stays on an alien world. During these marathon flights, spacecraft face relentless challenges, micrometeorite impacts that can puncture tanks, thermal cycling that stresses every component, equipment degradation from cosmic radiation. The probability of experiencing some kind of propellant leak or pressure loss during such extended missions approaches mathematical certainty. With the current system, any significant leak would cripple the spacecraft's ability to maneuver. Imagine being halfway to Mars when your attitude control fails. You can't adjust course to compensate for navigation errors. You can't orient solar panels toward the sun for power. You can't position heat shields properly for atmospheric entry. The mission becomes a one-way death sentence broadcast live to Earth. But hot gas thrusters solve this nightmare scenario elegantly. Even if the main tanks completely lose pressure, Starship retains full three-axis attitude control capability. The crew can still perform course corrections, manage thermal loads by rotating the vehicle, and execute a safe landing on Mars. This isn't just an upgrade. It's the difference between a successful Mars program and a catastrophic failure that sets human space exploration back decades. 
However, the Mars implications are just the beginning of why this thruster upgrade is so revolutionary. This technology unlocks something even more ambitious and complex, reliable orbital refueling operations. And what SpaceX is attempting here is absolutely mind-boggling. Picture two spacecraft, each weighing 250 tons and measuring over 400 feet tall, attempting to dock while traveling at 17,000 miles per hour, hundreds of miles above Earth. The precision required is incredible. We're talking about tolerances measured in centimeters while dealing with vehicles larger than most skyscrapers. Any loss of attitude control during this delicate ballet would be catastrophic, potentially destroying both vehicles and creating a debris field that could threaten every satellite in orbit. Current estimates suggest that fully refueling a Mars-bound starship will require eight to 10 separate tanker flights, each delivering approximately 150 tons of propellant. That's over 1,200 tons of fuel that must be transferred through multiple complex docking operations, each one a potential point of failure. With the old Olage gas system, a single propellant leak during any of these operations could doom the entire mission sequence. But with hot gas thrusters providing completely independent attitude control, these operations transform from extremely risky procedures into routine operations. Even if a tanker experiences main tank pressure loss during docking, it can still maintain precise control and complete the fuel transfer safely. So how exactly do these hot gas thrusters work? And why are they so dramatically more effective than current systems? The answer lies in fundamental physics and combustion chemistry that most people never consider. Traditional cold gas thrusters work like releasing air from a balloon. Pressurized gas escapes through a nozzle, creating thrust through basic momentum exchange. It's simple and reliable, but the energy density is extremely limited because you're only using the pressure energy stored in compressed gas. Hot gas thrusters are fundamentally different. They're essentially miniature rocket engines. They actually burn methane and oxygen in a combustion chamber, creating high temperature, high pressure exhaust gases. The chemical energy released during combustion provides vastly more power than simple pressure release. It's the difference between pushing a car by hand versus using the engine. Both create motion, but one delivers orders of magnitude more force. The specific impulse difference, 300 seconds versus 70 seconds, translates directly into fuel efficiency. This means Starship can perform the same orbital maneuvers using five times less propellant, or alternatively, execute much larger maneuvers using the same fuel budget. For space operations where every kilogram counts and every drop of fuel is precious, this efficiency gain is absolutely revolutionary. But here's the most brilliant aspect of this design choice, and it reveals Elon Musk's long-term strategic thinking about Mars colonization. These hot gas thrusters use methane and oxygen, the exact same propellants that power Starship's main Raptor engines. This propellant choice isn't a coincidence, it's the foundation of Mars' self-sufficiency. Mars has carbon dioxide in its atmosphere and water ice at its poles. Using a well-established process called the Sabatier reaction, these can be converted into methane and oxygen. SpaceX has already demonstrated this technology and plans to manufacture all return propellant directly on Mars using in-situ resource utilization. Now consider the alternatives that other spacecraft use. Nitrogen for cold gas systems doesn't exist in significant quantities on Mars. Hypergolic propellants used by many spacecraft are toxic chemicals that definitely don't exist on Mars and would be extremely dangerous to manufacture there. Even helium, commonly used for tank pressurization, is virtually non-existent on Mars. By standardizing on methane and oxygen for both main propulsion and attitude control, SpaceX creates a completely self-sufficient system. Every drop of fuel needed for the return journey, whether for the massive Raptor engines or the tiny attitude control thrusters, can be manufactured using Martian resources. This eliminates the need to transport exotic chemicals across 140 million miles of space and makes Mars operations truly sustainable. Meanwhile, as SpaceX races to perfect this technology, the competitive landscape is shifting in ways that could determine who controls the future of space exploration. Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander is advancing toward its 2025 launch date. China's space program continues accelerating their lunar ambitions, and other nations are developing their own deep space capabilities. 
If Starship experiences further delays with attitude control systems, there's a real possibility that other countries could achieve major space milestones first. The implications extend far beyond national pride. Early success in space often determines who controls critical technologies, orbital infrastructure, and eventually extraterrestrial resources. Blue Origin's approach uses traditional hypergolic thrusters, which are proven and reliable but require toxic propellants that can't be manufactured on other worlds. In the short term, this conservative approach might prove more reliable than SpaceX's innovative but unproven hot gas system. But for long-term space colonization, SpaceX's approach offers sustainability that traditional systems simply cannot match. The Chinese space program, meanwhile, is developing their own heavy lift capabilities and has announced ambitious plans for lunar bases and Mars missions. If they achieve major milestones while Starship struggles with fundamental control system issues, it could shift the entire balance of space power for generations. The first real test of these revolutionary capabilities will come during the orbital refueling demonstration scheduled for 2026. This mission will push your Starship systems to their absolute limits in ways that no amount of ground testing can replicate. One Starship will remain in orbit for three to four weeks, an eternity in space operations, while awaiting the arrival of a tanker vehicle. During this extended period, the spacecraft must maintain perfect attitude control while battling the sun's intense radiation, managing thermal loads that cycle from plus 250 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit every 90 minutes, and keeping all systems operational in the vacuum of space. When the tanker finally arrives, both vehicles must execute a precision docking maneuver while traveling at orbital velocity. The margin for error is essentially zero. Any significant deviation could result in collision, catastrophic explosion, and the loss of both vehicles worth over a billion dollars each. Then comes the really challenging part, transferring over 1,000 tons of cryogenic propellants in microgravity. The physics involved are incredibly complex. Without gravity to settle the liquids, fuel and oxidizer float freely inside tanks like bubbles in water, making it nearly impossible to control flow rates, measure remaining quantities, or maintain stable pressure. SpaceX's solution involves applying small amounts of thrust during transfer to create artificial gravity, settling the propellants at tank bottoms, where outlet valves can access them reliably. But this requires continuous, precise attitude control throughout the entire operation. Any failure of the thruster system during this critical phase could turn a routine fuel transfer into a catastrophic explosion visible from Earth. The successful development of these hot gas thrusters represents more than just an engineering achievement. It's a prerequisite for humanity becoming a truly spacefaring civilization. Without reliable, efficient attitude control systems, the complex orbital operations required for Mars missions, lunar bases, and asteroid mining simply cannot be executed safely. Consider what's really at stake here. Mars colonization requires not just getting to Mars, but establishing sustainable infrastructure there. This means regular cargo deliveries, crew rotations, manufacturing facilities, and eventually economic activity that makes the entire enterprise self-sustaining. All of this depends on space transportation systems that can operate for months or years with minimal maintenance. Traditional spacecraft are designed for relatively short missions with extensive ground support. But Mars operations require spacecraft that function more like commercial airliners. Reliable, reusable, and capable of operating with minimal maintenance across dozens of missions. The hot gas thruster upgrade moves a Starship significantly closer to this airline-like operational model. If SpaceX succeeds, this technology will likely become the foundation for an entire generation of space vehicles. Other companies will adopt similar systems, standardizing space operations around methane oxygen propellants and dramatically simplifying logistics for multi-company missions. But if the system proves unreliable or too complex, it could validate more conservative approaches and potentially delay human expansion into the solar system by decades. The implications extend to space stations, lunar mining operations, and interplanetary cargo ships. Every future space endeavor depends on solving the attitude control challenge that SpaceX is tackling right now. However, implementing this system isn't simple, 
and several major technical hurdles remain that could derail everything. Hot gas thrusters are dramatically more complex than coal gas systems. Each thruster is essentially a miniature rocket engine, complete with ignition systems, combustion chambers, cooling circuits, and sophisticated control software to manage combustion in the vacuum of space. The reliability requirements are staggering. These thrusters must be capable of thousands of starts and stops, operate flawlessly after months in the harsh environment of space, and function across temperature ranges that span over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The failure rate must be essentially zero because attitude control failure in deep space means mission failure and potentially crew death. SpaceX must also solve complex integration challenges. These thrusters need their own dedicated propellant tanks, pressurization systems, and plumbing networks that don't interfere with the main propulsion system. All of this additional hardware adds weight and complexity to an already incredibly sophisticated vehicle. The engineering challenge is finding the optimal balance between capability, reliability, and mass efficiency. Perhaps the biggest challenge is testing validation. While SpaceX can test individual thrusters extensively on the ground, the complete system can only be validated in the actual environment where it will operate, the vacuum of space during real missions with real spacecraft. This means the first few flights with hot gas thrusters will essentially be live experiments with billion-dollar vehicles carrying irreplaceable cargo or crew. As SpaceX prepares for their next Starship flights, we're not just watching rocket tests, we're witnessing the development of technologies that will determine whether humanity successfully expands beyond Earth or remains forever confined to a single planet. The hot gas thruster upgrade represents a critical decision point in human history. If successful, it enables sustainable Mars colonization, reliable space operations, and the eventual spread of human civilization throughout the solar system. If it fails, it could set back human space exploration by decades and potentially allow other nations to dominate the high frontier. The stakes couldn't be higher. Every test flight, every component failure, every engineering breakthrough brings us closer to answering the ultimate question. Will humanity become a multi-planetary species or will we remain trapped on Earth forever? Elon Musk's thruster upgrade might be the key that unlocks our cosmic destiny. So here's what we know. Elon Musk's hot gas thruster upgrade isn't just fixing a technical problem. It's literally the difference between humanity reaching Mars or watching our cosmic dreams burn up during re-entry. Flight 9 showed us that current systems can fail catastrophically. But these new thrusters, they could be the key that unlocks everything. Think about it. We're living through the most critical decade in human space exploration since Apollo. Every decision SpaceX makes right now will echo through centuries of human civilization. Will we become the generation that finally made life multi-planetary? Or will we be remembered as the ones who almost made it? The next few Starship flights will tell us everything. If these thrusters work, Mars becomes possible. If they fail, we might be stuck on Earth for another generation. But here's what really keeps me up at night. What if there's something even bigger we're missing? What if this thruster upgrade is just the beginning of changes we can't even imagine yet? What do you think? Are we witnessing the birth of true space civilization, or are we still decades away from making Mars a reality? Let me know in the comments below. Because honestly, your perspective might just change how I see this entire story.